All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of actually a new edition of Blend Blazers with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. And I am so excited because today we are finally getting to talk to somebody in the gaming industry. And not only just somebody, we're talking to an honoree that's been uh, given an award for social and economic initiative, Mrs. Trinidad Hermita. How are you doing today? Hi, Ricardo. I'm, I'm honored. I'm blessed. Today's a good day. You know, I like that. Well, who was that that said that, uh, not easy, e. was it Ice Cube that said today is a good day? One of those guys said today is a good day. Yeah. I, I definitely uh, feel that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are the founder and CEO of the Hermita Company LLC in San Francisco, California. The company focused on building equity through empathy and the co-founder of Mr. Augmented, a mission-based startup that is focused on creating practical, immersive, augmented, reality experiences that impact and enhance users everyday life that was a lot yeah that, that, that was a lot so okay in your own words tell me who you are i'm a human being that loves people and believes that in order to impact people you have to have a people first modality and mentality uh and what i mean by that is uh somehow some way throughout the, the years of the industrial evolution and to where we are today in this technolo technological immersion and, and space, we've lost sight of who people are and how they tick and how they function. And I try to make sure that that's a focus of companies that are emerging startups, um, established corporations and different things of that nature. And so I love working with um, in multiple capacities, a consultant, an advisor, a coach, um, a friend, someone who is just having a conversation around what is it, what does equity look like? And when we talk about equity, I can go into a little bit more depth about what I mean by equity. Um, because a lot of times we're we're focused on equity right now with the startup boom and IPOing as being money. And equity is building in that gap. Uh, there's a gap of knowledge, there's a gap of cheat codes, there's a gap of understanding around how and what it takes to be successful in the space. And so I try to build that into the strategies that I work with. Actually, it was funny when you when I saw equity in that, uh, that write up, I was like, this word has come up across the board. I don't think I've ever heard the word equity used so much. Uh, we did an education forum and that came up. What is equity in education? What is equity in business with these with actual conversations that I'm having with leaders in this industry? And it's amazing what it looks like. So explain to me, what does equity look like for us in this in this gaming space? So let, let me I love using examples like stories, right? Like so I would say a great way to describe equity in the sense that I'm trying to instill it within programs, modalities and how companies think about building access, right? Like access is not just creating a pipeline and getting us in the door. Because I'm realizing that once we are in the door, when I say we, I'm talking about marginalized ethnicities um, and genders. And once we get in the door, it's like, how do I create an environment where people who have never been in this space can be successful? So I love using an example of like, my parents have never worked in the game industry. And so, I don't have a direct link within my familial line that's going to be like, here are the cheat codes. This is what you need to know in order to be successful. When I went into corporate America and I went into tech, my parents were um, working in tech at one point and my mother's like, you know, slick your hair back, don't wear hoops, put on some pearls, wear a blue skirt, wear some heels. Like there, at least she was able to tell me how to go to an interview and be someone in that space that would be looked at as professional right like then in totes google google messed it all up for all of our parents because google was like oh if you come with a suit and tie you don't understand our culture we don't do suit and ties here and it was interesting in one of my interviews with an executive I came dressed to like just how I, I have to dress like this is who I am. I'm an Afro Latina, blackity black black. My mother always told me I come in and I have to look for, I have to represent. And I told this executive, I said, hey, I'm not coming to work with flip flops in socks. Like that's just not who I am. And part of the work that I do, you have to accept me in my 
three piece suit or in my, with my hair, the way, whatever way it is that day, because it's going to change every day and you're going to have to accept me. And, and that is what I mean by building an equity. Give me the cheat codes because you care about my being successful within your company, within this space, or even within gaming, what are the cheat codes? Do I have to go to the company happy hours? Do I have to make sure that I check in with my boss um, daily if I'm an engineer when I'm committing code? Does it have to be weekly? You know, understanding the, the terms of engagement and the rules of engagement are imperative to me being successful in the space because guess what? I've been taught not to ruffle feathers. I've been taught not to ask too many questions. I've been taught, and when a white man comes into the room and just starts to, hey, what's going on? What's this? What's that? Oh my God, what do you mean by that? I'm like, wait, am I supposed to be acting differently right now? Do I have the space and the freedom to be myself? Do I have the space and the freedom to ask questions that challenge leadership? Or, and I, my Asian count, my Asian brothers and sisters feel this way too. Like sy systemically within our cultures, we're taught to not be heard or seen. That's true. This is very true. But that's not how you succeed in technology and in gaming. You have to be loud. You have like, and not loud just to be loud. You have to know your stuff, but you also have to back it up. And the thing is being a black person in this space, you're going to have to back it up on multiple levels. Our white counterparts can come to work mediocre and, and last and be okay mediocre. Mm -hmm. We have to be exemplary. And that's a tough pill to swallow. And that's a tough Thing to rise up to. So I'm trying to get companies to come in and build that in to how they think about engaging with our people. And so that's my passion. That's how I come in. And I, and I call it out. I call it out daily of this is a disparity within the system. This is a systemic crack. This is racism. Um, and how do we go about removing some of these cracks, removing some of these things that might hinder us from being successful in this space. I heard nothing but passion in that whole, <laughs> in that whole display, which I love. It's something, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. So just for perspective purposes, uh, in 2020, the worldwide PC gaming market revenue was estimated at almost 37 billion US dollars, while the mobile gaming market uh, generate an estimated income of over 77 billion US dollars. So we're not talking about an industry that's only bringing in a minute amount of money. We're talking about a significant amount of money. So I guess my question to you, and I'm going to segue because we had a conversation with one of our partners on the live podcast, and we were talking about diversity and inclusion officers and how they're kind of put in positions to kind of create, become rainmakers, creating water in deserts because there's really not anything set up or anything really constructed for them to be successful. You've done this job. So what was it like for you going into that space? Going into, so any, any good d &I practitioner is gonna understand that every space is different. So I, you know, I've worked at EMC, I worked at Dell, I worked at Niantic. And each and every single place was different. There's not one thing that I could, like some best practice that I could just slap on and be like, hey, we did this there, it's gonna work here. Like every environment, every culture, every leadership is different. So you have to go in and do a lay of the land. I like to call it my world tour. I go on my world tour. I meet all the leaders. I meet all the stakeholders. I meet key people within the company who know the historical context and value that they can bring to the table so that I can have a, a wide, a wide view of what the company is and how it's going to be successful. Then, you know, yeah, you are creating a river in the desert. You are trying to take dead bones and bring them to life because at the end of the day, there's a, a history of not understanding how to engage with marginalized folk. The game industry right now, if you want to just talk about Black folk in the game industry, we make up 2%. But I need to, un I, this is on the inside, this is on the um, developer side, right? I need people to understand that we consume games at the highest level and we have the most buying power. So how is it that on the outside consuming this, we are at the highest level, but on the inside, we are at the lowest level. 
And so I try to engage with leaders and understand what their burning platform is, what their strategy is, not just for people, but for the products that they have, the games that they have, and think outside of the box and create ways that we can engage with communities instead of just um, profiting on these communities. In that space, uh, I found this. In less than seven years, 57% of video game players in the U.S. between the ages of 6 and 29 will be people of color, but the industry remains extraordinarily white. That's despite the fact that Black Americans who represent less than 2% of the gaming industry are among the most likely groups at 71% to be engaged gamers. So I guess the question becomes, what is at the core of this disconnect? Like, is this, are we not being prepared early enough to walk into these fields? Um, like STEM programs and things of that magnitude, what's at the core of this? I think it's not just one thing, Ricardo. I think there's several things. I think that um, probably the first game developer, and then this is not a fact that I can quote, um, but I believe like the first game developer education like degree may have had, may have come up within the last five to 10 years. Um, so, so like when you think about the industry is a newer industry and I don't think people were ready for gaming to be as popular as it is now but then also so let's talk about it like it, if you were playing God of War um, or not NBA 2K or or an NFL game or a sports game you were considered a dork or a geek like it wasn't until recently that being a gamer is a cool thing like sure. now you see athletes talking about other games. You see people going to Afro Comic-Con. Now there's an Afro Comic-Con. Like before you had to go to an E3, a GDC, um, or one of the other like, or PAX, like PAX West, PAX East. And when you would go, you know, there were very few black and brown people who were dressing in cosplay, who were, who were like, you, you, were, you were not treated like we are treated today. Now, um, also, when I think about getting into the industry and developing, when I played Nintendo back in the game day, my parents never told me that I can be a game developer. They told me I needed to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, or a preacher. And I chose the preacher because that was the easiest out of all of them. And I was like, Jesus, thank you for a pathway. But you know what I mean? Like, ultimately, yeah. ultimately, my parents didn't want me to risk going into an industry that they knew nothing about because they wanted me to have stability. They wanted me to make sure that I was okay and that I could provide for myself, period, right? Now, that's hurt our communities. That hurt our communities because that framework and that mindset kept us from going to the lifts, to the Googles, to the, to the Airbnbs, to, to, the, to the Coinbases, where we could have started at companies that what might have been startups and new, we didn't know about them. And our parents were like, eh, that's a risk. Go to the Dells, go to the Cisco's, go to the like, I'm, I'm, HB, HB's and IBM's. And, and those companies didn't give you equity at the beginning. You had to be an executive in order to get some type of equity or bonus. Now I'm talking about money, right? So the ones who were able to make a risk and go to the Lyfts, the, the Ubers, they IPO'd and became millionaires. And we came after the fact, we came late to the party. And so there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now that I think that we need to wake up and stop being afraid of because it's fairly still new. Um, one of them is Web3, talking about cryptocurrency, blockchain, talking about DAOs, talking about the future. We are gonna be in a cashless society. The end times are coming. And I'm not even trying to be funny. Um, and so like, how are you, educating yourself or at least dabbling and in getting involved in um, to understand, okay, how do I prepare my, my, my future generations to not be left behind in this boom? And I believe gaming is one of them. Gaming is, there's esports, so there's the front end, there's consumers, there's um, the ability to create esports teams and educate. We can create pipelines within our education system from K through 12 to college. Our HBCU, they're now tapping in, but let me tell you, there's a disparity because they're so slow. You know, like they don't want to, 
they don't want to get with the program. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know, what do you mean? Uh, I don't know. And then they're getting all this funding and they don't know how to even actualize it into a program that's going to develop people to get jobs. And so for me, <clears throat> I'm like, there's over 101 jobs in the game industry, over 101. So my biggest piece that I tell companies that they're missing out on is people who are in other industries who don't know that this industry is here and that they can cross over. When I say there's HR jobs, you can use the same information and understanding that you have at any other company. There's finance jobs, same thing. There's law, there, same thing. There's um, marketing, same thing. So you're talking, most people think of game gaming and they think of game designer, game developer, right? Okay. But you can be, you can be one of the other 98 jobs right in in the industry and and be able to cross over and understand and so and i am also speaking at the mountaintops to all the recruiters and all the hiring managers trying to teach them in the game industry hey be open to people from outside this industry stop having a siloed viewpoint that someone has to have five to 10 years of game developer or game industry experience. No, that's not realistic because this, this, this industry has only been around for like maybe 35 years, maybe, right? Like I'm, and so it's like to be able to now put the stipulations of you have to have five to 10 years of experience, a degree when there's boot camps that are producing UX designers, engineers, right? Like who can code. And so I want to think outside the box in funneling this place with um, boot campers, with UX designers that are coming from boot camps. I want to educate people on thinking outside the box with their career choices and looking at the Sony Playstations, looking at the um, EAs, looking at Unity, looking at Niantic, looking at Bungie, looking at these game companies that are out there that are hiring people who don't necessarily have game experience they have to have marketing experience law experience um so yeah i think that there's a lot of room for growth and understanding how to tap in and i think that there's a fear that you have to be somebody who you're not um in order to engage in this industry so let me ask you this because i guess that is the holistic issue when you look at it for individuals who are, who are thinking about getting into it so for case case in point i have a little brother who loves gaming and when it came time for him to decide to go to school, I'm smart, but even I didn't, I was like, I don't know what a, what a journey into that field looks like, especially on the developing side, which is what, kind of what he wants to do. So kind of help me, un, help us understand what does a trajectory into that industry look like if you want to be on the developing side? Like, what are they looking for? Is there a certain type of degree they look for, a certain skill set? What does that look like? Well, developing, you're talking about engineers, right? Like on the engineering side, are you like, talking about, are you talking, like about games. are you talking about game designer? I mean, there, that's what I'm saying. Like there's a, there's, it takes a village, right? So we need product managers. We need technical product managers who, who have the background of coding and engineering, right? Then we need um, game designers. Then we need, um, uh, when you talk about art, art directors, we like, there's, there's so it. There's yeah, so yeah. many people that it takes when it comes like, um, and when I'm talking about art, there's 2D art, 3D art, then there's um, environmental art. Like there's all these different things Jeez. when you talk about it. So I think that there's a couple of ways. There's there's multiple ways to get in. When you want to talk about development, I automatically think of engineering. And when I think of engineering, I think that the, depending on the company that you go to, every company like their, their language is different, but Unity is a big one, right? So understanding Unity, understanding how to code in Unity. Um, and even right now with like all these different platforms opening up, like if you're interested in developing a game, go on the Unreal platform, which is um, Epic's platform and learn how to uh, develop like a, an environment on there. Um, but I, I think that there are now more degrees in this space so you could go and look for different schools i know um there's one in new york upstate new york um i know that uh usc has a, deg a degree which is out in um in uh, la i believe um and then there's more um then we're, we're even talking global there's global programs in puerto rico there's there's programs in london um and then if you want to start going into um vr mixed reality augmented reality then there's even more 
in that space that you can learn if you're interested. Um, I do think that there's multiple pathways. Some of these um, companies have pipeline programs. I know that I, when I was at Niantic, we were working on creating um, a program of boot camp where you could go through a boot camp and then you can get an apprenticeship at Niantic to work for months. And then if you do well in that apprenticeship, you'll get hired on full time. And that's not a new thing. Like Amazon, I believe has them, Microsoft has them. <coughs> so there's, there's definitely opportunities out there uh, to tap in if you want to be an engineer developer. Um, I think there's another, there's a, um, it's called IGDA. Hold on. IGDA, International Game Developers Association, Latinx and Gaming, Black and Gaming, Game Devs of Color Expo. There's a lot of, I'm getting a cough spurt. <laughs> okay. My allergies are kicking. The um, weather just changed. <coughs> oh, yeah, I live in Atlanta. We're <laughs> In the first half of the day, in the second half of the day, is sixty degrees. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So, um, I have. If there's any younger students and even people who are interested in developing, there's a couple of different events that happen throughout the year. Um, Game Devs of Color Expo happens, and they highlight like game devs online it's an online thing right now they also had it in new york at the time when um one time i went but right now it's online and i think if you go on the website now you could even look at some of the past content that they have um and it also if you look at the sponsors who sponsor that event those are companies that are sponsoring this event so they have pipelines they have they have a desire to engage, right? Like then you look at Latinx and gaming, you look at some of the um, events that they're putting on, they're doing mentorship events, they're doing, um, they're bringing on executives to talk about their initiatives. Um, you also have Afrotech, you have, um, I'm trying to think, FinTech Black, which is happening next week in New York. They're talking more about, um, augmented reality, cryptocurrency, blockchain, uh, in, and bringing in people who are the spearheads, like the one of the guys created the first black crypto wallet. Like there, there's a lot of information out there. And I think the issue is getting it to the people and to the parents. Um, I just wrote an excerpt for my homeboy, Marcus. I call, we call him Marcus Esports Howard. <clears throat> And he wrote, he wrote a book, a collective book with friends and, and people in the space to educate people on what's happening. And he focuses on esports. And in my excerpt, I talk to the parents and I say, parents, like there's more jobs out there. Don't be afraid to allow your child, your young adult to engage in this industry because there's equity in this industry. There's jobs in this industry and they're not they're not paying chump change, you know, they're, they're paying. Sure. And, and not only that, like more companies are open to looking in other places to build in um, communities, right? Like Atlanta is, I'm like, Atlanta needs to be the next tech hub. We need Detroit to be another tech hub. We need North Carolina, which already has some tech companies there, but also Florida, Miami and Tampa need to be the next tech hubs, right? Places where we can buy property and build our families and not have to uproot ourselves and go to the Silicon Valleys, go to the LA's, right? Go to the New York's where rent is 3000 plus for one person, you know? so. These are things that I like to talk about and elevate, especially in rooms that most people aren't in because they're not thinking about these things. Well, let me ask you this. So how much of an issue is funding to be able to become a hub in these kinds of cities? How much of an issue is that for minorities to be able to pool that kind of money to, in essence, build an empire like that? Give me the question in another way. So are you talking about for companies to actually invest in, in, in communities? Like, or is it like you're saying like the community makes it a hub? I don't know. Yeah, like if the, if 
a couple of tech folks came here and they wanted to create a tech hub, access to capital and things of that magnitude to be able to do that. What does that look like? Is it, is it something hard for them to get to? Are there places that have that kind of money set aside for them to be able to ask for, to create these kinds of communities? If that makes sense, does that make more sense? It does. And so in order for a company to want to land in a specific place, they need to know that they have the talent there and the talent that they need, right? Like, so the talent to create whatever they're trying to create. If we can make a case and say Atlanta has um, 80% engineers, 70% designers, da, 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 and we make that case, we say, you come here and we're willing to come and work for you, right? Like that's the big, that's the big thing because there's a lot of, um, like Snap is in Atlanta. Snap, which is an AR focused um, Snapchat, is in Atlanta, and like so they're they're getting talent in Atlanta because they're there, right? Like so, what companies are losing out on talent because people are realizing through the global pandemic, we want to be where our families are. We don't want to be away from our families anymore. So more people are leaving in droves to just go work remotely for another company that they may not be as passionate about but they're going to be there because they know that they can get the um, the work and they can be closer to family. Okay. I didn't, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. So you've been in the industry for what upward to 10 years. So I guess my question to you is what are some of the significant strides that this industry has made to be more inclusive and more diverse in those 10 years of your tenure? <laughs> it's, it's, it's that bad. <laughs> Um, I want to say this. I want to say that the industry is growing and moving rapidly. And what I mean is if you're not in the agile, like willing to like learn on the fly and move and go, like I find that a lot of companies are in rapid growth. And when you're in rapid growth, you don't think about what to do best for the communities. You think about how do I get people in? And what you're doing is you're getting people in who look like the people who are already in there because you're just trying to quickly hire people. And um and that's that's an issue, especially with startups, because that's where the most like opportunity for black and brown people to really get capital and grow is in these startup spaces, because you have to be willing to take the risk to go somewhere that you don't know if they're going to be successful or not, but they're willing to give you the money and give you the equity. And um, so I'll say this. EMC, the chief diversity officer that I was working for there, her name is Jackie Glenn, and she's phenomenal a Jamaican woman who does not hold her tongue or, or her feedback. And that's why I'm the way I am. I am the way I am because I had some tough feedback that, that, that molded me into not being afraid to stand up for what I believe in in this space. And we were doing things 10 years ago that people are just starting to do now. So when I made that face, it's because we're doing the same thing and expecting different results. Um, and I, I need us to start thinking about our policies more and thinking about systemic racism and cracks that are in the system of HR, in the system of performance, in the system of how we hire and fire people. Um, and also think about our policies around how we promote um, people from within and retain our folks. I, I'm glad you said it. I had a conversation with somebody yesterday who just an African-American male who just did not believe that systematic racism exists, that people just, that our people are just not go-getters enough. Can you oh my God. I have someone like that, that I work with. And it's, it's so sad. It's so sad because what happens is these companies then employ someone like that. And they think that they represent the whole bunch. And that person could do more damage. Um, and it's not about go-getting when there's redlining. There's not about go-getting when there's actual gatekeeping. And one thing is he could be a gatekeeper. He could be like, oh, you're not going hard enough. I'm not gonna give you the referral. Guess what? My, my philosophy around referrals is I'm gonna refer everybody. It's up to the HR department's job to figure out if you're qualified or not. I'm not going to gatekeep you. I'm going to refer you. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to give you my advice because I'm not just going to refer someone and not give them the cheat codes to the arena in the area that I'm in. I want you to know what the cheat codes are in order to be successful in this space. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 whoever that person is, I feel sorry that you think that way because um, guess what? I'm about to hit 40 years old and I'm barely getting to the space that I need to be in that I should have been 20 years ago, but there were blockers. 
And there were people who didn't want to open the door for me because I was young and I didn't maybe dress the way that they did, or I didn't have the, the same, I didn't speak the same way they did, or I didn't show up to the company parties the way that they did. And I had to navigate the space the way that I did. And it's not about bootstrapping. It's not, it, it the generations behind us are smarter, faster, wiser. Um, so I honestly think that this industry is getting, it's more and more young adults and the generation behind me are willing to start their own thing. It took me till 39 to start my own thing, right? Like I should have started my own thing a long time ago, but a fear and the desire to just, just be, be stable or just to have security, right? And we think that these companies are secure yeah. and they're going to be able to take care of us when at any moment in time we are at will employees, they can fire us or go down the drain because of mishandling of whatever, mm -hmm. right? And um, I'm not gonna put my trust in someone else to depend on my future anymore. What are some things that are coming down the pipeline that kind of excite you in this industry that you're seeing that we may not be privy to yet? Well, I think mobile gaming is blowing up because everybody has a phone. Right. Like, and that's something that um, people need to recognize is your, your child, your young adult, or even you, you might play like words with friends. That's a game, you know, like you might play um, angry birds. That's a game. Um, and, and so thinking outside the box and, and, and looking at ways, I think AR is another thing, augmented reality, because that we can use our phones to augment reality. So when we're using um, our phones to see this world that we're coming in is uh, a decentralized world where we're thinking about the metaverse, right? The metaverse is another universe where we where we create in a space that is a virtual space, right? And in order to bring that virtual space to life, we have to augment it and, and put it through augmented reality. Um, I think that uh, VR is dope. I love VR. I love playing in virtual reality, but it's the, the access to VR headsets is very hard. So you'll see more opportunities for VR on your phone, like, you know, like using the phone and then using something else. To oh, put yeah, to put the phone in. And then yeah. Um, uh, I also think that uh, when we talk about uh, Roblox, which is, uh, an, a, it, they popped up almost it feels like overnight it's gaming our, our youth and young adults who are playing it they're able to build their own realities their own spaces where their friends can come in and use robux which is their own so it's their own cryptocurrency right it's their own currency within the game right same thing with um fortnite and um and unreal has made it really easy for people to go on that platform and create and so uh just all i'm saying is don't be afraid to go into these spaces and check them out and, and see what they are, understand what your kids and your young adults are doing, right? Like, and um, don't just say, oh, they're just playing on their phone. Like they're, they're essentially, you might have the next um, game designer that's just playing on their phone. And, and if you hone that and you give them the right tools, they can create something that could build generational wealth for your family and the, fam and, and the generations to come. All right. Any final thoughts to individuals who are interested in getting into gaming? Final thoughts. I would say don't be afraid. Um, if you're interested in learning more about this industry, just um, I use Twitter to network a lot. Like I really? follow everybody that I, I um, that I that I'm like, oh, this these companies, I see what they're dropping. There's some podcasts that I love. I know Khalif Adams. It's called the Spawn on Me podcast. He talks a lot about gaming. There's Hip Hop Gamer, who's on Hot 97. Um, he talks a lot about gaming, and he's been doing this for a while. Um, there's these organizations that I talked about, Game Devs of Color, um, Latinx in Gaming, Black in Gaming, IGDA, Gay Gaming Professionals, um, GGP. Um, there's just a lot of people who care about um, care about people getting access. Um, I think that there's some major conferences like PAX, which they're more consumer conferences, which you're going to like look at the games, but um, sometimes you'll see uh, major companies there trying, you know, just giving information. 
Um, GDC, which is a game developer conference that happens every year in San Francisco, that's a huge conference and that's for the developers. So you're going to see a lot of developers show up. You're going to see a lot of recruiting. Um, and then E3, which I don't know if that's still happening, but that used to happen in LA every year another consumer conference and um, we're global. So there's Women in Games International. There's um, there's a uh, POC in play, which is based in the UK, people of color in play. And like, there's like, so there's all these different organizations um, that are for developers. There's the, the game industry gathering, which is a gathering that a friend of mine started, um, Guy Church Ward, not Church Ward, Guy something else. I, I just, messed up his name anyways um what's his last name um there's so many different opportunities in this space to um guy bloomberg and he started game industry gathering during the pandemic um there's organizations like i mentioned afrotech there's hashtag hire black which helps people get jobs in tech in general oh. shout out to niani like um so follow hire black um, there's dev color, which is a, uh, it's for developers and it's a dev, um, conference that happens. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some, but like, I mean, you that's find... a lot right there. I've never heard of, so that's a lot right there. I've never heard of. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can find me on LinkedIn, Trinidad Hermita. You can find me on Twitter. This is Trini or, um, web three Trini. If you you, if you're more on like the web three crypto, but this is Trini is my like main um, on, on Instagram, Twitter. Um, I'm also, my website's trinidadhermita.com. And I'm also on like Twitch and Discord, you know, like, so I, it's, it's, these are all spaces that um, I, I promise you, like, I, I didn't, I didn't come into this industry knowing what I know today. I I'd networked. I I met I looked at people. I looked up and I tried to find all the black folk in gaming, right? And I was like, <laughs> let me find it. Shout out to Travis and Shanae T. Bryant. They've been in the industry for 25 plus years. Like black, wow. like legit black folk who are dope. Um, Shanae's at Oculus working right now. And like she's been, she's worked at Capcom, she's worked at all these places with all these games. I mean, Travis was. Travis was working on like, um, what's that game? The one that it's like the RPG, um, Dungeons and Dragons. Travis, black man, oh, worked on Dungeons and Dragons. Like, you know, it's, it's like, wow. just, just like understanding that like um, Eric Wilder, like Elder, sorry, not Wilder, Elder. There's also um, Tech La Mer, um, which happens in LA in La Mer Park every year and a historically black community that talks about tech and brings people in to have conversations. I got Charles Babb, who's been working in this industry forever, like is currently working with Disney. Like, you know, like we here, we here. Uh Clearly, um, we just don't know that. We we just don't know that. I had no idea that this. There's also people. like actors, voice actors. Um, shout out to Eli Harris. He 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 does voice acting um, on video games. Um, Kronos or Kronos, I think, is a black man. Like on one in God of War, like the voice is a black wow. man. Like you know, like just um, and the one the um who created the first cartridge uh a black man created the cartridge these are the one we use to put into like nintendos and stuff yes i didn't know that yeah you need to remember his name because i'm curious now you have to remember his name because i did not know that you got to remember his name i'm gonna give it to you right now um i had jerry never lawson. heard that jerry lawson jerry yeah. lawson jerry lawson um created he was an engineer and um, was an American electric electronic engineer. He is known for his work in designing the Fairchild Channel um, F video game console, as well as leading the team that pioneered the commercial video game cartridge. Nice. Jerry Lawson. In the black in the black and gaming, um, we have a Jerry Lawson Award, which is for like. Yeah. So there's, there's just. Yeah. You've given me here. hope today. Like I have a lot more hope today because 
I just was, and I was like, God, do we even have a footprint in this thing? I mean, I'm sure they're there, but we never hear about it, but yet we consume so much of gaming. Like it's, yeah, you've given me hope today. So thank you for that. Cause those names and those programs, I'm definitely going to make sure are in the clip that I use. Cause there are a lot of kids who are interested in getting in gaming, but they don't know where to start and don't, and their parents don't know either. So like you said, it's kind of like they steer them away from it because it's like, ah, oh, that's not really for us. We don't know anybody. So yeah, that, that was, I really appreciate you today. Last question, because I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask. How do you feel getting this award? <laughs> I feel honored. <laughs> I feel honored. I, I think it's interesting when you get an award for doing what you think you just need to be doing, mm. you know, in, in this space. And so I'm honored and, and I believe that, um, there's there's more to come like this is just the beginning and and I I wouldn't have it any other way so I'm just grateful I'm honored I'm humbled because at the end of the day like I do this because I believe it's my ordained thing to do while I'm on this earth um and I believe I'm called to just be a change maker and I believe that there's a lot of people out there who have a genius and you just need to tap into what that genius is and, and fight for it and, and not let imposter syndrome come in and try and make you think that you're not supposed to be in this space mm -hmm. and not let um, people who like, I will say sometimes my my own community, there's this, this what is it like a prophet will not be accepted in your own. Own mm -hmm. and honored in their own community. And like, sometimes I will say like my own community has like, why are you doing this? And I'm just like, why not? Like, and so get out of, get out. If you have a bunch of naysayers, a bunch of people around you who are not supporting you, find your, find your village, find your community of people who are going to support you because I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for um, the Carls, the Shanae's, the Travis's, the Arthur's, the Eli's. I mean, the Alton's, the, I could go on for days, like, like of people who, who have like open doors and given me access and believed in me. And that's why I'm here. Nice, nice. So congratulations on your award for the fifth annual Black and Gaming Awards. I'm so honored to have had you. Uh, now that I have your contact information, yeah, I might be looking you up for some stuff. And if you're ever in Atlanta, let me know if you get here. I would love to have you in my studio. My shows are done in studio. So I would love okay. to have you in the studio. Anytime. Uh, I love Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Don't tell me that because I will don't don't tell me that because I will get you. I'll be like, okay, so you said such and such and such. So, but definitely would love to have you in the studio and, and actually be able to talk to you longer uh, because this was very eye-opening for me. And I'm sure that my audience will appreciate it as well. So we will talk to you soon. Thank you for being a guest on the Leadership Blend, Blend Baser's new platform. And again, congratulations. And just stick around while I stop this uh recording.